Hi everyone, so this video that I've made for you is my top 10 tips for minimalists or people who are thinking of applying a minimalistic approach into their life. Tip number one is only buy what you need when you need it. So this means being pre-organized and applying the just-in-time technique. For example, you know, no more stockpiling of items. So for example, toothpaste. You only buy toothpaste when it's running low or when it's completely run out. And yes, that does mean that you need to you know, be very organized and maybe keep a little a list somewhere of things that are running low so that you buy them in time and are not caught out uh, with no toothpaste. But it will mean that you don't waste um, space in your bathroom cabinet, you don't waste money, and it means you'll have a lot more, a lot bit, it will be a lot easier to clean um, your bathroom cabinets when you need to. Tip number two is don't be afraid of letting things go. So say for example you're going through your wardrobe and you find some items of clothing um, that you've barely worn or haven't worn at all, possibly still with the price tag um, attached. Um, and you might look at that and think, oh my goodness, um, that was so expensive, what a waste of money, I never wore, even wore this or barely wore this. Um, but you know that you don't really like that item anymore and it doesn't actually reflect your style or taste or feel comfortable to wear. Make peace with that feeling of guilt and let it go. Um, the whole point with minimalism is you um, get rid of things that don't serve you and you open up the space for bigger and better things to come into your world. So if you want, a couple of different options. You could give that item away to a friend who would appreciate and value that item. You could sell it on something like you know, um, Gumtree, Craigslist, or eBay. Or you could just give it to charity. But it's about letting go and not feeling too guilty, but also making sure that you learn the lesson about why you bought that um, in the first place and why it doesn't actually suit you right now so that you don't make the same mistake again. Tip number three is understand that minimalism is a lifestyle. It's not a, a, an adjective or a definition, it's a way of life. And you need to be constantly working on it if you want to become, I guess, a minimalist. Um, old habits die hard and we all come across triggers that um, make us go back to our old um, ways of life. And I know for myself the other day I caught myself buying excess of things that I didn't really need or want uh, or even appreciate and I had to stop and sit down and catch myself and ask myself what is going on why am I you know doing this because it's not what I this is not the way I want to live my life and um, so you, you need to be always present with yourself and understand that minimalism is you know it's a way of life and it's something that you know you, you practice um, each day almost like a meditation Tip number four is enjoy minimalism. Minimalism is not about punishing yourself, being mean or cruel or putting very strict um, restrictions on yourself. It's about um, you know, focusing on things that give you, um, that you value, you love, you use and you appreciate. And we all know from the law of attraction, you know, where we put our energy, um, we get more back. So for me, you know, applying a minimalistic approach to my life has given me so much more time, so much more, um, energy and that has mean, meant that I have, have you know bigger I have more time to have bigger and better connections with the people that are important to me and I can have um, happier and healthier experiences in my life as I continue on you know through my journey. Tip number five is shield yourself. When I first started falling into minimalism or incorporating it into my um, head um, and home and heart, um, I didn't announce it to the world. But slowly people started sort of questioning why I didn't have certain things, you know, like a less kitchen utensils than, than most people. And I would tell them. And admittedly, some people laughed at me and thought I was crazy. It was just a phase. But um, I learned to sort of protect myself from people's judgment and criticism and stand my ground as to this is you know my home this is my life and this is what makes me feel good so um, you do need to be careful that you don't get impacted by people um, maybe you know judging you for this way of life it's this is your life and this is you know only you decide how you want to live it and it's funny half the people that did maybe question me or laughed at me um, for this have now themselves actually incorporated a minimalistic approach and I get these phone calls you know, when friends are going through, um, you know, cleanses and culls and they, um, you know, say how amazing it is and how they don't know why they didn't try this ages ago and it's been, you know, one of the best things they've discovered. And, um, yeah, so 
be prepared to you know to cop some criticism um, or people laughing at you but that's okay because um, you're the one who's getting the benefit of this and you never know who you may inspire tip number six is understand your limits there are going to be parts in your life where you simply cannot apply a minimalistic approach and you need to make peace with that and accept that and um, you know maybe you that that component of your life where you can't apply a minimalistic approach maybe further down the track you can again but that's okay we can't be so this is not about us um, you know controlling ourselves but it's about I guess living within our means and understanding that what our lifestyle involves and what is um, important to us and a classic example for myself is makeup I have um, always loved makeup. I love what makeup does to enhance beauty, but I've never been a huge cons cosmetic consumer. However, because I am um, now of doing YouTube uh, videos and um, some television work and photography work, I've had to purchase a lot more makeup than I would normally have. And initially I felt incredibly uncomfortable around this because I didn't feel like it was um, authentic to who I was and, and my message about minimalism. But then when I sort of sat down and looked at it in more detail and understood that actually this makeup was actually a tool in my life it was adding value it was you know and it, it is able enables me to create different looks um, from a creative perspective in my life and it actually is something I really enjoy doing then that was okay and by no means does that mean I go absolutely nuts and spend that you know thousands and thousands of dollars on makeup and fill my um, bathroom cabinet with you know 500 lipsticks but when I do buy something, I make sure I still apply that minimalistic approach and that I love value and appreciate. So when I put that lipstick on, I love it, that lipstick. I love seeing it in my bathroom cabinet and I appreciate you know, what it does to my lips or my face or the, the way I'm presenting myself that day. Tip number seven is open your mind and your head and your heart to the way um, minimalism is, applies in your life. Initially, when most people lean into minimalism, they start with their home. You know, they do a big cleanse of their wardrobe or, um, you know, their house. And that's great. And it's a really good way to start um, uh, to apply minimalism and feel those um, immediate benefits. But it doesn't just stop there. You can apply minimalism to so many different components in your life. For example, you can apply it to food in simplifying, you know, the food that you put into your body. Um, eating more whole foods, which obviously your body will get, most likely give you more energy and, and thank you for. You can also apply minimalism to your finances. And if you haven't already, you can watch my video on money and minimalism, which is probably one of my most popular videos. But again, there are a lot of benefits to come from simplifying um, the way that you use money in your world. Another one is, you know, um, applying a minimalistic approach into your commitments, both professionally and personally. You know, not overloading your weekends with, you know, so many activities and events and functions, just picking a, a few key things that you really want to do that weekend and enjoying them instead of running around like a headless chicken, trying to, you know, please everyone and be there for every single function and, you know, end up exhausting yourself. Um, you know, it, it's, and even from a work perspective, if you're feeling a bit stressed and overwhelmed with work, learn to say no to taking on extra projects if it's not going to serve you um, and you're not going to be passionate and enjoy the, working on those extra um, commitments. And finally, another um, area which I'm a little bit hesitant to talk about, but I will because I think it's of um, importance and um, consideration worth, worth being considered, is um, the connections with the people around you. Um, for myself, I would much prefer to have, you know, a small group of amazing friends who I absolutely love, appreciate, um, and have an incredibly deep and um, grateful, you know, connection with where we inspire each other, we support each other, we protect each other, than rather having like a group of say 50 or 60 average friends. You know, I focus on very much on quality um, and quant uh, sorry, quality over quantity. Um, because that's what works for me in my world and through as it helps those friends help support me through you know challenges that I might be going through tip number eight is with sentimental stuff take a photograph we I when I went through my, some of my um, cleansing culling process there were things that I um, found that were very sentimental but I did want to let go of and so for those things I took a photograph and an example was um, uh, my old dog Alfonso um, I found his dog tag with my mobile number and this dog meant so much to me when he died it was absolutely heartbreaking I had breaking I had so much trouble processing the pain from that 
Um, but I found his collar. So what I did was I took a photograph of it. I put it on my personal Instagram um, account with a little bit of a memory about Alfonso. And I then buried that um, dog tag in my garden. So, you know, for, that might be something that helps you um, get rid of or let go of sentimental things without, without disrespecting or dishonoring the memory of those things. Tip number nine is honor the process. So when you're going through a detox, a cull, a cleanse, um, you know, a, a throwing out phase, um, learn to, to be present during that moment. Um, when I have gone through minimalism challenges, um, the days where I've, you know, not tried to rush through it, but actually calmly go through things, um, I've had so many lessons that have come up, um, self discoveries, um, realizations, messages about that have really helped me grow as a person, understand more about my own personal values and authenticity. And it's been a very, um, I guess, powerful and uplifting and enlightening experience. So for the times where you can afford to take your time in, in going through that cleanse, um, learn to try and be as present as possible and listen to what comes up because it also can be a very cathartic experience. Tip number 10 is lean in. Minimalism is not for everyone and not everyone feels the same benefits um, that, that I do or other people may do. Um, you know, so try applying a minimalism, maybe just attack one cupboard or maybe um, go through one drawer or um, one component in your life, maybe start with your wardrobe. Um, see how, if it works for you, if you enjoy it and you um, feel those benefits, that's great, keep going with it. If it doesn't work for you, then that's absolutely fine. Leave it for a while, May maybe consider coming back to it later if you want, or don't even bother with it at all. It's, that's absolutely fine. Everyone has their own personal journey and it's, you know, no one should judge anyone, but you know, testing, I think trying anything in life is always a great experience. And by leaning in, it's a way of very gently and gradually seeing if this might serve you. Anyway, that's it for this video. As always with my videos, I hope they've had it, you know, help you in your life and your, in your journey. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. You can also subscribe to the official Sugar Mama um, website and you can follow me on Instagram at sugarmama.tv. Sugar um, I will see you next week on Monday for Money Monday or, or and on Thursday night for Lifestyle Love. But ciao for now and I'll see you then. Bye.